Hey, what is going on guys? Vexan here bringing a really quick Photoshop tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make a render in Photoshop. We you know how to crop around images. And this is a really common thing used in thumbnails and banners and just generally graphics design. So in this example, I'll be showing you how to take a screenshot or how to take a picture properly and then how to actually cut around that in Photoshop. So let's get started. So as I said, the first step is actually taking the picture or taking the screenshot. Now a lot of people might gloss over this step, but I really think it is the most important. So there's a few examples I've got here of what is a bad screenshot or a bad image. So what we want here is the gun. This is what we're going to be cutting around. And as you can see, it is very dark. It's in shadow. There's very little contrast and very little definition in the you know lines and different parts. So this is just generally a bad image because it's just way too dark. We can try and fix it, you know, with some brightness and contrast, saturation, stuff like that, but it'll never really be that good. It'll look washed out when we try and fix it. So that's definitely not gonna work. So the next option is a really bright image. You can see everything, but here there's almost too much contrast. Everything has, you know, very little, again, too little definition because there's no shadows. It's just all pure light, and that light's also a bit too pinky, really. So this definitely, it's an improvement, but it's not perfect. So you want to get try and get some you know better, nice, more shadows than this. So the third option here, this is pretty much the perfect image. You can see most of it is in light. There's a light shining on it, but you can see the whites here still look pure. They're not too red or too bluey. The white balance is good. You can still see definition with the shadows and the highlights on different you know corners and edges, bits of the gun and it's all nice, clear, and crisp. So this is pretty much the perfect image to crop around. So once you've got this, now the time comes to actually cut around it. So what tool are we gonna use? A lot of people will automatically go and start using the lasso tool or the razor tool, but as you can imagine, these don't work very well. Because we're trying to use the razor tool, it's just gonna be looking ugly and rough and it's never gonna work well. And if we use the lasso tool, we're going to have to zoom in and we can start cropping around and so far this seems pretty good right working perfectly it's you know it's maybe some sharp edges but generally it's okay but the problem is now we can't actually zoom in or out or move around properly so what you do here is pretty much set in stone if we control z it'll just undo our whole line so we can't just control z back to a previous point and if we accidentally go too fast and we double click then you get this happening and you've screwed your whole thing up and there's you know no fix here so I wouldn't recommend using lasso tool, not because it's necessarily bad, but there's just definitely some limitations on it. And if you make a mistake, you, you're screwed, you've got to start again. So what tool do we use? Uh, we use the pen tool. So this pen tool is basically a tool for cutting around images and making selections, but it's completely you know customizable. You can change stuff, you can undo, redo, all that, and it just gives you a lot more freedom. So if we go down and we do the same thing as we did with the polygon lasso tool, going around bit by bit, and there's still square lines, but these will curve out, we won't really notice them too bad. So we can just go around like this, and it's pretty much you know, the same as the polygon lasso tool. But what we can do, is we do control Z, it won't undo our whole line, it'll just go down back to the previous point. So we do control Z, we can go back and forth, and any mistake we make, we can undo point by point without ruining our whole selection, which really helps when you're doing a huge image like this and we're going all the way around. Now what you can also do is if we've realized there's something bad, you know, back here, we don't like this curve here. What we can do is we can hold control and we can move this around as freely as we want and wherever we want. So we can alter what we're doing later on. After We can, we can be at the end of the gun and then we can just go around and make some touch-ups like this by moving these around. And you can also do this with a line. So you can extend a whole line like this rather than just points. So it really just does give you a lot more customization and a lot more freedom if you make a mistake. So let's say we want to go all the way up here and we're all good. Touch this line up here, move around, and we want to get this nice curve on his sleeve here. What we want to do is we can go around like this, obviously, but it's going to look a bit square and just not very nice generally. We want to get a nice curve. So what we can do with this tool is if we click up here on the corner and we click and we hold, we don't let go, and we drag around and this line will appear. So what this line does when we rotate it, it just changes the direction that the top, the peak of the uh, arc here is pointing. So if it's pointing this way, you can see the, the sharpest bit of this curve is pointing upwards, you know, to the left, or to the right. So you can just change that by rotating around this center point here. Now these two lines obviously can be extended 
and shrug. Now what these do is the severity of the curve. So if we bring these right to the center, that line's perfectly straight. And if we extend it, it's gonna be a really sharp, um, really harsh curve on this line. So we can just change that around. It gets takes a bit of getting used to, and it just really takes time to use this tool and you'll get a feeling for it. You'll start to feel comfortable with it. So if we go like this, and then we can get this nice curve on his sleeve here. And I think that's pretty much perfect. Really nice smooth curve. And then we'll just say, I just wanna go back around here. I'm not really caring much. And we're back at the end and we've cropped around everything we want to. It's all happy with it. You know, we've changed around little bits. And we wanna finish it off. What you wanna do is go down to the last point and this little circle will appear next to your cursor. So just click that and what that'll do is it finishes your line, closes the loop, but it's not set in stone. So we just control Z, it'll go back to your point and you, you just go back and you can keep going and continually align again. So it's not set in stone. And what we can also do if it's finished, we can hold control and this time it will move the whole selection rather than just one line or one point. So it just that's how you finish it off. But obviously this is not a selection yet. So what we're gonna do is right click within the area, hit make selection, make sure this feather is on zero pixels, unless of course you want a feather, you know, that's really up to you, but I recommend when you're making renders to never use a feather. It's a technique people use when they can't be bothered going completely accurate and they just want to save time, but it doesn't look good, so I definitely don't ever recommend doing it. Make sure this is anti-aliased, new selection, and hit OK. And then now this is set in stone. This is your selection, and this is it. Now, of course, you can always control Z and you know go back to it, but that's pretty much your selection made. So what you can do now is hit delete, and then control D to deselect. And there you can see you've made a really nice crop around the edge of your image, really nice uh, sharp cuts and as, ac as accurate or as inaccurate as you want it. So that's pretty it. And obviously you can see I've got a gray background here just so I can see you know where I've cut and where I've missed bits. So I might wanna neaten this up a bit later. So if I wanna do that, I always can. And what I've done to make this gray background just so you can see where your errors are and where you wanna fix up is go into a blank layer, so we just create a new layer here. And what you wanna do when you're on that layer is press shift and delete. And this dialog will pop up, uh, the fill. So just select 50% gray, normal 100% opacity, and then click okay. And I'll just make the whole layer a solid gray color. So that just really helps uh, when you wanna check with, like how well you've done and any m spots you've missed. So you can just do touch ups. Now that's pretty it guys, that is how to make a render in Photoshop. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial, hopefully it helped you. Remember if it did, please leave a like or a comment down below, that's always really really appreciated. And if there's any questions you have, uh, please leave a comment, I try to get back to all of you, but I don't always get time. So if you do see someone with a problem and you know the answer, please help them out. Uh, you know, just drop a comment letting them know what the solution is to their problem, if you are aware of a solution. That's always really appreciated, just help each other out. And that's pretty it, so hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.